This video will cover the final part and the second part of the division of nervous system and neural pathways part of unit three of the higher human course. So it'll cover the neural pathways. Now this will be a shorter video than the previous one because there's only really three main things to cover. So the reason why we have multiple neural pathways, multiple different ways that nerves can connect is because your body is a really complex being. Um, and the more different types of neural pathways you have, the more complex it can be and you can communicate in different ways with different parts of your body. So the first type of neural pathway that you have is what's called a converging pathway. Now, if you know from just general English and also maybe from lenses in first year, um, converging means to come together. So if you have a look at this diagram here, these are neurons, single neurons. So this is what's called a cell body of a neuron. We'll talk about that later in the course. And this is part of a projection that comes off of that neuron. Now you'll see two very similar diagrams. So the key with any of these neural pathway diagrams is to pay attention to where the arrows will be on that or to be able to add arrows to that diagram that will show the impulse direction. Okay, so in this diagram for this type of neural pathway, the arrows will go from multiple different neurons, so from many neurons, in towards one. And that neuron will then fire the impulse from all three of those down along its own projection. Okay, so for a converging pathway, impulses from many neurons. Okay, so the real important thing to emphasize here is it's many or multiples. Okay, um, are passed to or they travel one single neuron. Okay, so many into one. And always remember to describe this as an impulse or impulses. Okay, so that's what these arrows are shown. So an arrow will show an impulse. Right, now you might be wondering what the point of that is then. So why is it important to have converging pathways? Why is it important to have impulses going from many neurons into one? And the reason that is, is it increases sensitivity. Okay, and it allows for a combined effect. Now, to explain what I mean by that, um, you can think about the, the back and the, the palm of your hand, okay? So, if you think about the back of your hand, and if you run your fingers over the back of your hand, it's not super sensitive. But if you flip your hand over and do the same thing, you can feel that much more. Now, the reason why there's more sensitivity is because there's more neurons there feeding into one neuron that fires up your arm, okay? And another example, which is the one that we often talk about, as we talk about ones in the eye. Okay, so mainly in sense organs. Now if you think about the eye, the retina in the back of your eye has multiple different rods and cones, thousands and thousands of them. And they'll pick up lots of information and pass them, each of those rods and cones will pass their impulse to one neuron which will pass along the optic nerve. So you're getting a gathered effect. So for example, in low light, you pick up small amounts of light in each of these, but when you combine that together, you get a combined effect. So you pass impulses from many neurons into one neuron or to one neuron. Okay, and that would be a converging pathway because those impulses come together at one neuron. Okay, and these are often related to sense organs. Okay, the next one then, is what's called a diverging pathway. So diverging is the opposite of converging. So if converging means to come together, diverging means to split up or to separate or to spread apart. So in this example then, again, we've got multiple different neurons, but this key again is where the impulse goes. So the impulse is passing from one neuron to multiple neurons. Okay, so in this diagram, you have the impulse going from one neuron passing to many neurons. Okay, so again, if we think about what the previous description was for converging, 
We have m pulses, and we always start with m pulses. From one neuron, are passed to many neurons. Ten. So one to many this time. Okay, and I should probably say impulses because there's always multiple. Now, again, you might want to think about the reason why this is. So if you think about your arm and holding a pen, you'll have a neuron that comes down your arm and then will then have to feed information to your thumb and all your fingers. So it would seem pointless to send five different messages, one for your thumb, one for this finger, etc, etc. You just have one impulse going down your arm and then it's spreading out to multiple different motor neurons or in down different neurons onto each finger or into each finger. Okay, so that allows for coordination. It allows coordinated movement. Right, and as a perfect example that I'm showing here, it allows fine motor control. It allows me to make very clear and very precise movements with my hand. Okay, so this is how you can thread a needle or how you can make very precise movements with your hands. So this would be, for example, the use of your fingers. Right, to thread a needle or something like that. Okay, so coordinated movement and fine motor control in your hands. So these are often um, used for motor pathways and things like that. Okay, not sensory pathways. Okay, and then the third and last neural pathway that you have is what's called a reverberating pathway. Now, in terms of just general English, you might know what a reverberation is. A reverberation is similar to an echo. It's a repetition, so it's a sound that would be reverberated, be repeated. Okay, and that's exactly what happens in these neural pathways here. So again, if I show you impulses passing down, this would be an, a neuron earlier in the pathway and this would be a neuron later in the pathway. Okay, so that's at the start, this is near the end. An impulse passes from one early in the pathway to one later in the pathway. But you'll notice that you have another neuron here. This impulse can then also pass back to this neuron and be passed back up that pathway. Okay, so in this example, neurons later in the pathway can then make connections. Okay, so it can form connections, neuron connections, with neurons earlier in the pathway. Okay, so ones that are later can form connections with ones that are earlier. Now the reason behind this is it allows for um, nerve impulses. So it allows for impulses to be sent back through that pathway. Right. And the importance of this is it allows for repeated stimulation. Okay, so you can then cause a muscle to continue to contract and contract and contract. So for example, I would send an impulse down my arm, and if I had a reverberating pathway in this, it would keep that muscle contracted. Okay, because if you just send one impulse, it'll contract and then it'll relax. Okay, but if you have a repeated stimulation, um, it'll keep that muscle contracting and keep things stuck in that certain way until it tells it not to be. So this is exactly how your breathing system works and how your chest works. So it'll send impulses to the muscles in your ribs that will then cause your chest to get bigger and bigger and bigger through that reverberating pathway. So it'll keep sending that impulse round and round and round and your muscles will continue to contract until it tells that to stop and it'll block that pathway.
Okay, so repeated stimulation allows for that impulse to be sent back through, okay, and allows for the same process to be carried out over and over and over again. Okay, and again, these arrows show impulses. Now, the reverberating pathways one is quite easy to spot because it repeats and it echoes itself. The ones that people get most mixed up with are the converging and the diverging. So converging and diverging, if you look at the diagrams, they're very similar. Okay? So be aware of where the arrows are going, or if you're asked to then draw arrows, make sure that you're drawing them the right way. Okay? Because this diagram here could also be a diverging pathway if the arrows were going the other way. Okay? Right, so that is us covered the neural pathways part for the first section of Unit 3.